Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Michael Seven Michael, and you're watching the Food Caster Show. That's right, this is Food Caster. Everything, eating, planting, buying, enjoying food, and being healthy about it. And of course, we've got with us the lovely Sam Eats Plants. I'm back. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm good. You're good? Yes. Good? Yes. Awesome. And want to give out... A shout out to Sound Shark, SoundSharkAudio.com, this wonderful microphone. So please check them out. So Sam, we're gonna talk about oil. Or as our people say, oil. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting. If you talk about buying food and enjoying food, well, don't you gotta cook it? And what is the best way to cook your food? Best way, what, in tasting or for health? You know what? Well, that's the thing, right? That not that the battle? Because I know for myself, I want to enjoy food. Yes. It's like pointless to not enjoy it. Okay. But then there's another part of me now, learning more about food, is like, well, it's fuel for you. Yes. It's a part of you. Yes. There's got to be some sort of this going on. No? Yeah. I mean, well, it depends on how you think about it. Okay. Really, uh, food fuels us so we can continue like living okay. up until, you know, we're not here anymore. Okay. And so on one level, the need to enjoy what you eat is a mental disorder. Interesting. On one level, mm. because the need for food is to live. You mm. know, and they say that that phrase, uh, do you eat to live or live to eat? Right. Um, and living to eat really is killing us, clearly. Wow. Clearly. And the, uh, the top 15 reasons um, people die in the U.S., 14 of them are food-related. So it's cool if, if we want to do something for taste mostly. We just have to understand what that comes with. Wow. You know? But, yeah, so what is the best way to cook? So if you want to talk about health... Mm -hmm then I think the two best ways of cooking, meaning mm. using heat, is steaming and boiling. Okay. Um, for some obvious reasons, but some not so obvious reasons. So I'll tell you about cooking with oil. Okay. So there's a lot of different oils, and we've heard of saturated. We've heard about polyunsaturated. We've heard about monounsaturated. And I think people don't really realize what they are. They've had their own spin of their own in media over the last few decades. So people hear saturated and they think, bad for you. That I do. And you hear polyunsaturated, you're like, good for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's, let's talk about what those mean. Let's talk about it. It literally is a chemical uh, chain. So everything is a chemical. Mm -hmm. And it's a bunch of carbons. If anyone remembers... Uh, chemistry at all mm -hmm. and you can have like chem uh little structures of c's and o's and h's and the, all the bonds the double bonds mm -hmm. that stuff is going on okay you have to think about food like that too because that is food also and particularly when it comes to fat there are these lineal chains of c's carbons so it's a bunch of c's connected mm -hmm. and they all have like a hydrogen connected to it saturated means Every single link to a carbon atom has a, hydrate, uh, a hydrogen connected to it. That's what saturated means. Oh. So every part of all those C's has a hydrogen around it. When it's monounsaturated, one of those C's doesn't have a hydrogen connected to it. So it's a bit unstable. A bit, a little bit. Wow. Monounsaturated, just a bit. Um, polyunsaturated there's tons of hydrogens missing from those seas which means it's highly reactive highly unstable but this is our healthy fat you have to understand it's unstable though so what does that mean mm. what does unstable fats mean when it comes to actually eating it in our health that means if introduced to something uh different foreign or heat Mm -hmm. It changes. It no longer has the linear uh, shape anymore. It now looks like it could look like an L. It could look like a, a whole other thing. Wow. That is now rancid, and that is now carcinogenic. Oh. 
Okay, so let's talk about, I see you have oil right there in a mm -hmm. dark green glass bottle. Mm -hmm. so, Which is the olive oil. So olive oil mm -hmm. is polyunsaturated. If we are very specific, we can say, where does it say? 1.5 grams of polyunsaturated fat. Absolutely no, almost no saturated fat. So this is what we call healthy. A lot of people call olive oil healthy because it's so low in saturated fat, so high in polyunsaturated fat. There's a reason why it's in the dark green bottle though. Because polyunsaturated fats are so reactive that even sunlight coming through changes it. It changes it. That's why it's in a dark green bottle. Wow. That's why when you go to like really nice she she health stores, right. all of the olive oils not only are in dark green bottles, but let's say cold pressed. Right. Because heat will change the structure and make it rancid, which makes it carcinogenic. It is so. Wait a minute. So if I'm cooking with it, you are making it rancid as you cook it. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Come with me on something different like, oh, I'm gonna put it on my salad raw. Okay. Might be fine. Okay. It might be fine. <clears throat> but, um, wow. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what about argan oil, the same thing? Or? Well, everything's the same type of principle. How much saturated fat does it have? Polyunsaturated, monounsaturated. We're talking about stability. So that when I'm speaking about these things, I'm talking about stability of the oil. This one is a lot like this one. Nice amount of polyunsaturated fats, nice amount of monounsaturated fats, uh, very little saturated fat. It just means that it's very unstable. Now, now we want it to be stable or unstable, this is, just to be clear. So. If you're going to cook with oil, you don't want it to be carcinogenic. You don't want it to be cancer causing. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to create free radicals that will damage your cells. Right. The more polyunsaturated it is, the more unstable it is. That means things will react to it quickly, like cooking or light, mm -hmm. or even just being left out in a room that's too warm. Honestly, you should put cold pressed olive oil in a, the fridge. It okay. should go in the fridge. Okay. So let's talk about an oil that's like super saturated, mm -hmm. coconut oil. So coconut oil and palm oil are basically completely saturated fat. It is very stable. When you look at it in room temperature, it is solid, right? Like their melting point is a different melting point than olive oil. But also, when you cook with it, it stays the same chemistry. You'd have to cook it for a long time over very, very high heat for it to start to change. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, something that's not a plant fat, lard, is an extremely stable. Full of saturated fat, right? Extremely stable. It will be carcinogenic for different reasons, but not because it's saturated. So oh. now let me explain. Okay. <laughs> why mm -hmm. we have decided that saturated fat as a community, mm -hmm. as a country, okay. as a society, we mm -hmm. decided that this is the bad fat because there was a lynx back in the 70s and 80s to heart disease and saturated fat consumption. Mm -hmm. So it's a correlation, which is absolutely true for sure. But through that, the, um, some some lobbyists with like soybean oil companies, mm -hmm. they were like, okay, this is great. Soybean oil has very little saturated fat. Let's really demify, um, demonize coconut oil. So coconut oil at the time was very cheap. It was very cheap and it came from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden in American markets, they're not on the shelves anymore. Tons of vegetable oil or vegetable oil, as Americans say, right. but tons of vegetable oil, corn oil, are really on the shelves now touting how they have very little saturated fat or they have no saturated fat, heart healthy. They'll say heart healthy mm -hmm. without the full context of, however, <laughs> if you cook with it, it will damage you. But they're putting it on the shelves for people to cook. They're putting it on the shelves for people to cook. But like people eat and cook a lot of things that are not good for them, that's fine. But the whole problem is we don't know what we're doing. That's my only issue. Okay. Just know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I have olive oil too, and I saute my veggies in it. I know what I'm doing though. Like I understand what I'm doing. Okay. And then a lot of times when I'm like, you know what, let me take a break. I'll just steam and boil all my stuff. Mm -hmm. 
That's just how I am taking that information, but I'm informed. Most right. of us are not informed. Right. And then on top of that, so now what has happened, they realized that, that there's some health benefits to coconut oil. So as we all know, coconut the prices oil. Went oh up. man, prices went up. They're in health food stores. Like this was the cheap oil. Wow. The cheap oil that was easy to come by because coconut trees fruit four times a year. Soybeans are harsh on the land. Mm. It makes so much more sense to use coconut oil than a lot of other oils that we tend to use, but the marketing of it is such where now coconut oil is for elites. Well, now I'm seeing it in um, documentaries where they're really bigging up coconut oil. So, yeah, they are. Do you which wanna... just means it's going to get more expensive. It is. You know what's sad, though? Mm -hmm. If I'm being very honest. Be honest. No oils are actually good for you. What? Dun, 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 dun. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, they're not. So, all right. So we know that sugar's not good for us, right? Right. And it is a reduced component of a whole food. That's what sugar is. Mm -hmm. A reduced component of a whole food. What is fat? What is oil? A reduced component of a whole food. So olive oil. Because olive. the oil comes, right, comes from something. Yeah, they press. Right. So the sugars is, is, is cooking, pressing, and boiling out everything except the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got sugar. Oil is cooking, pressing, um, extracting out everything that's just the fat. Sunflower seeds, corn oil, coconut oil in general. All of it. There's, no, of it. there's no in general. Every yeah. single oil is just fat. No excuse. There's no carbohydrates. There's no protein. There's no minerals, there's no vitamins, just like sugar. It's wow. purely the fat. It's purely that micro, um, excuse me, macronutrient from the plant, just like how sugar is that macronutrient from the plant. Mm. It's, in my opinion, and I, I wish it was stuff that's more definitive on, on this out there. Mm -hmm. There's not. But from all the research that's out there, I cannot say that this is a health food. And I think that's still a conversation, and, and that's fine. We can all have a willing con conversation, but I cannot see how that is healthy in any way. It is pure fat. Right. And again, every episode I must say, talk to your doctor. Do your own research. This is based on information that is gathered from individuals on this show. And um, you have to ultimately make up your own mind of what you want to do. And it's a journey. It sure is. It's a journey of understanding because it's very obvious in the medical industry, in the food industry, they're yeah. trying to figure it out. Like, yeah, they are. Or, or do you feel that they know and they're just not telling the public? No, that's not it. There's some okay. things that they know, but a lot of things is this idea of figuring out. You have to understand, it's only been in Western world, because okay. in, in Eastern and African um, cultures for centuries, they mm -hmm. under, the synergy of food and health was really, really um, uh, married together. Mm -hmm. In our Western modern culture, mm -hmm. it is a new concept that what we're eating is actually what's killing us. Like that really is a new concept. I would say maybe 20 years wow. that we're really, really, really looking at it. I mean, there's still people out there who will say, oh, I don't think it's gonna work. People still, <laughs> they still right, say right. that in 2018, like, wow. it doesn't really matter. Oh, like you don't eat any fresh foods, everything you eat is cooked. Does that really matter? Like they really are still wow. saying it. So there's a misinformation out there that we don't really understand. So I don't think that's, that industries completely know and not telling us. Mm. I think there's some things they know. I think mostly what the food and nutrition people are trying to do mm. is to mesh together the foods that we've decided we're addicted to along with trying to be healthy. And I think that mm. it could be a benefit for some people. Keeping profits up and yeah. at the end of the day. Yes. They want to make their money. Yes. So like, oh, how can we do this in a healthier way? Just like what they did a lot in the 80s with like <laughs> low fat, no sugar, you know? So it's like, okay, yeah. you can still have your cookie, but this one has no sugar, more chemicals. I'm, I'm laughing because the, fa oops, the fast food chains, it's interesting how a, over the last five years, mm -hmm. a lot of them have changed their, um, their menus. Or, well, not changed, but mutated a they little did. bit. They did. Like, okay, we're not going to cook with this type of oil. 
but we're gonna cook with that. Oh, we're not gonna cook with lard. We're gonna cook because a lot of places cooked with lard. Yes. You know, people don't yes. remember that, yes. but not too long ago, that yes. was a popular thing. The lard started leaving fast food chains when the whole saturated fat scare came out. Okay. So they took out the lard and put vegetable oil, which ended up being more cancerous. Okay. Maybe less issues in some things, but more cancerous. So, you know, that's what we traded. But you're absolutely right. There has been a lot of changes to fast food, but do you know why? Right. <laughs> Sales are plummeting. Interesting. Sales are plummeting on almost all the major, major ones. There's a couple that are like uh, more healthier type of fast food chains that okay. actually have come up. Wow. But we all can think of the top three burger joints, right? Mm -hmm. The top three in the age group of 35 and under, mm -hmm. those top three that we think about when we think about burger joints, they're not even the top 15. Oh, wow. For people 35 and younger. Right. They're no longer there. Wow. Instead, it, it's like the popular coffee shop plays, the popular mm -hmm. Mexican spot plays. Right. Like the restaurants, these, the ethnic, a lot of ethnic food that places. That or, or yeah. foods that seem to be not as bad. Because burgers have a really bad rap now. And like it's it's a real issue. If you look on anything economic when it comes to those big burger joints, right. they are switching board members and CEOs like, like washing clothes because they're trying to figure out how do we keep these people coming in? They have to do something different. Yes, there are vegan burgers now at these places, and there are these vegetarian options because they have to figure something out, but it's still not working. Oh, by the way, let me tell you why. One place, I won't say the name, but you'll figure it out. They have really small bur burgers. Okay. They had, <laughs> they had a, a, a vegan, um, vegan burger. It was the worst. Yeah. It tastes so... <laughs> bad and i was like come on guys you got the money you could do this they do have the money <sighs> they, they could do they this could, they could do this they don't they don't want to do but it's all right i'm not sad about it <laughs> i mean it's an open market right business is business capitalism reigns so mm. like if the people demand it you give it to them i have to tell you something else about oil that mm. would really like freak people out though mm. okay so here's the thing mm. <sighs> Let's talk about something that's deep fried. So if we're talking about things that are deep fried, like French fries mm. or fried plantain or fried mm. yuca or some donuts, right? You have oil sitting in a tub at like 400 degrees mm. for hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. One of the things to realize about these oils, I just talked about how heat will make them rancid. Mm. The longer they go and the higher the temperature, the worse it is. So it's not just like, boom, it changes because you just cooked it on stovetop for your broccoli. Wow. But now you want to add doing it for like 12 hours at a wow. restaurant wow. for 400 degrees. Wow. Okay, but let me tell you what happens. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, you're making a face, so I know it's going to be bad. So carbohydrates, mm -hmm. when they're cooked over uh, 257 degrees, but I think it's not such a big deal, but when they're cooked over 257, 257 degrees, they start developing something called acrylamide, which is plastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. What gives French fries their crunch? Mm -hmm. When you cook it, okay, that's acrylamide. That's the plastic that happens at that temperature. Okay. Oh. Now, highly carcinogenic. Highly. And depending on what you cook in those oils at the, that high temperature, some are worse than others. When you um, apparently on the charts, fried chicken is the worst, the Stop. highest. Stop it. French fries are really high too though, I can't even front, and I love french fries. I love french fries. I love french fries. You gonna take away my french fries too? And you can do what you want, I'm just trying to inform you. <laughs> I still eat french fries. But, but not I, often. But I, I can't even say that. Okay, but, I you, can't but, even but you know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing, I'm very aware, and when things feel off in my body, I know what to do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what happens in these oils on high temperature. Like we literally are changing the structure of our food to become an inorganic compound like acrylamide and it's damaging our bodies, it's becoming our carcinogenic, it's hurting our cells and creating abnormal cells. Right. Just so you know. And, and I give you a lot of props for saying that because if someone catches you <laughs> with, with some french fries, hey! I said it. <laughs> I said it. Keep I never, it real. never tried to run from it. Uh, that's I 
will always say this every show. It is a journey. It's I stopped true. eating dairy. Good for you. Claps. And it's a struggle. It sure is. I'm still, I'm still going through it. Yeah. You know why you're addicted? Why? Um, it's a survival mechanism for mammals so that we keep nursing. Oh. So there's a chemical uh, reaction that happens in the brain. It's like a dopamine effect, like almost like taking a drug that's a, like a dopamine. Right. Milk will do that to us. But we use cow's milk, which has like far more dopamine issues because it's a huge animal. Wow. That's trying to make a 60 pound calf into a 2,000 pound cow. Right. But even with human milk, as we're babies, we're addicted to it so that we keep going for it because that's the only way we're going to survive. Wow. So if you're an adult drinking cow's milk or a child having cow's milk, cheese, yogurt, there's a reason why almost everyone who's either vegan or people who want to be vegan say dairy was the hardest. It is the hardest. Chemically, it's the hardest. We are literally addicted to it. Wow. So. I miss my pizza. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what, though? When I was going through the same thing you're going through, because uh -huh. it took me three years to get off my addiction to dairy. Wow. But when I was going through the same thing you're going through, I kept putting myself in the feet of, in the shoes of people who have, like, drug addiction. Mm. And I'm like, oh, God, I can understand what they're going through. It's just like my addiction is more acceptable. And it's kind of like funny if I break it. Like, ah, you had cheese. But their addiction is more serious. And it's mm. less funny when they have a hard time. So, but it's the same thing. It's still wow. hard. It's still hard. Wow. And that's what I did. That's what helped me keep going. I'm like, yeah, there's some people who, are, who go years, you know, and they're addicted to alcohol or narcotics. And... It's like a struggle all the time. But I will say, it seems like almost everybody will get over the, the dairy addiction if you stay away from it long enough. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and what I was saying to you earlier about dairy addiction, stay away from it long enough mm -hmm. and then have some for fun and you see how it, <laughs> how it affects you. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. you, you can't even run away from it. The phlegm, the, the being backed up, all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> you're doing that, uh, your stomach, like, cramping. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, all these things happen. So have fun, you know, <laughs> when you go ahead and try out in a, in a week or two or three weeks or a month. I'm, I'm not afraid. Send me a postcard. Oh, my goodness. Is that serious? Damn. Or just wait. Wow. It's amazing. But that's good, though. It is, because hopefully it will keep you on the straight and narrow. I know it did that for me. Wow. I know it really did that for me. Wow. Like, especially just feeling everything in your throat. It's just, mm -hmm. It feels like slime is there. The, and phlegm coming up. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You'll see. So with this, you're saying is that by getting off of it mm -hmm. and then randomly going back, now you're getting all the true reaction of what your body just kind of dealt with on a day-to-day yes. -day basis. Yes. It's just because you dealt with it for so long. It was normalized. Wow. It was normalized. Wow. For sure. It's like being groggy in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. We just find it normal. I mean, I know that there are very few people I know that don't drink coffee in the morning as a ritual to help them wake up. Mm -hmm. Why do we need coffee? No other animals need coffee. That's ridiculous. You can't wake up without coffee. So we've normalized being groggy and not functioning without coffee because the food that we're eating mm -hmm. is making us tired. Wow. And it's making it hard for us to wake up. So just like, just like what we're talking about with dairy, we've normalized some of the reactions. We're, we normalize having to spit on the street every now and then because you just wow. have something in your throat. You just have something. We've normalized having a runny nose just because it's Wednesday instead of, no, the only time you should have a runny nose is because you're sick. There should be no need for tissues unless you're sick. If you're having a running nose just because it's Monday or Friday or Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. that's an issue that you've normalized. Wow. And it's not until you take it out and then put it back in do you realize, oh, wow, wait, what? <laughs> that was happening? Yeah. Wow. So, chew on that. All right, so, you know what? Let's talk about alternatives. 
Um, sure. Uh, for she's real quick. Okay, cool. Real That's quick. this weaning process. Because sure. you know, it was interesting. I've had people say, "Well, why buy something fake to emulate something that you should stop eating?" I'm with that too. However, mm -hmm. people are all on their journey, mm -hmm. and sometimes if you want a processed plant food mm -hmm. instead of <laughs> cow pus, right, right. It's a really good substitution. And it is cow pus. It is cow pus. I'm not, I'm not gonna that lie. That sounds really nasty. It is really nasty. But it is. That's yeah. that's what it is. Um, what about using these kind of plant based So all of them are different. Okay. Um, some are better than others. Mm. This particular brand that you have, one of the things that made it popular very quickly is that it was soy free um, and nut free. So there's people with nut allergies, so they have mm -hmm. a problem with like almond-based cheese and cashew cheese. Okay. And there's a lot of those. Like almond and cashew cheeses are very popular. Um, this one doesn't have nuts. It's mostly tapioca and potato starch. Um, I think it's a great substitute to get you going because if you have the cravings and you want a grilled cheese sandwich, like I made one. Yeah, right. The other day. Yeah, I like this this company okay I like them I don't eat them often but I like them because I don't really have the, the, the cheese addiction crave. anymore gotcha yeah I don't crave in that way but I like it also um, it's soy free there's not an issue with soy but the media has put it out there that we should be scared of soy so for this company to exist they decided to go soy free as well to kind of corner that market of people who are like oh I don't want to eat soy even though soy is not the issue so that's them. But there's other things. There's people who make cheeses at home by taking raw cashews, soaking them for a couple hours, and blending it like basically with salt, pepper, maybe nutritional yeast, and lemon. And it does give like a cheese flavor. And that is a cheese that I can really get behind because it's all real food. That's mm -hmm. all real food. You know? And there are right, companies... Because technically, that is processed. It's very food. processed. It's very processed. They don't use dyes. I'll give them that. Right. They, they, it's colored with like turmeric and something called annatto. Mm -hmm. But uh, it still is processed. But everything is a journey. And then if that's what you need to stay off of dairy, because dairy is giving you <laughs> one, <laughs> one of 56 issues, <laughs> well, then do that. Uh, no, the way you say it, you, you talk about it like it is a drug. Like it's a drug addiction. It is. But it is a drug addiction. Completely. Wow. Completely. We're like chained to it. <laughs> Tell everybody your social media. You can find me at Sam Eats Plants on Instagram, on Twitter, but don't expect too many health things on Twitter though. <laughs> That's reserved for politics. That's a, the other the other uh, the other side. The, the other yeah. side. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, Michael Seven Michael. You're watching Foodcaster. It's your journey. Enjoy it and um, eat some stuff and leave us some comments. And uh, if you whip up some cool dishes or um, interesting places you'd like to go out to eat that you think is nutritious or just tastes great, let us know. Thank you so much for watching.